Hello everyone. Hi. Welcome to my channel. Hey, you know, here we all sitting on the rainbow, all hanging out together. So, you know, welcome. Find your spot and get comfy. Uh, I'm going to grab your attention for, you know, a little while. It won't be too, too long, I don't think. Uh, and in the meantime, you know, uh, we have our trusty troll. Uh, now, Sophia has a few things that she wants to go over, so I said I would. Okay, now, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a little bitty guy in my hair. You see him up there? Yeah, that's my first attempt at making a stuffy. I am going to keep trying to make dolls, because they're cute. But I thought it would be funny and cute to wear it, so why not, right? All right, well, the topic for today is... Um, basically, uh, what you're looking at is... Uh, the work environment in America uh, because I've done some research and uh, I went into um, some files and I went looking and I found that just about every single country has vacation time and or uh, they will also have the option for say a mother to take time off while she's pregnant and afterwards take care of her her baby uh, and then of course you have the fathers also getting involved which is great uh, but there's no such thing in America uh, not until Wow very loud motorcycle but not until 2020 that was when uh, the federal uh, employees they were able to uh, gain that ability so they do have the maternal and paternal leave now uh, however private employees I believe 21% of them uh, have been able to obtain that for themselves the rest of them uh, they don't get that and in fact I have done some research as well uh, some health care or health insurance companies don't really want to cover you uh, if you have a baby because it's extremely expensive and they don't feel like covering it which you know um, you know it is a natural biological function that most well quite a few people do you know um, they have a family I didn't but you know some people did and uh, you know to be told that it's too expensive to be covered by your insurance and then footing that bill that's a bit much you know um, and actually there is <laughs> because I checked at the federal level there is no law at all that says an American worker should have time off or, or any vacation not a single law exists for that um, and actually uh, there is no law that you know uh, explicitly tells the employer that they have to do it either uh, basically, it's up to the employer. If they want to give you vacation time, they can, and they will. Um, funny thing, though, um, even when people have the time off, and they know that, I believe the percentage was 54% of people that have a little bit of accrued vacation time don't take it. And the reason for that is usually logistics with their family uh, because while their employer might be um, comfortable or you know giving allowances as far as vacation time perhaps their um, their spouse's employer doesn't um, or it might be the school year for their child and you know there's all sorts of factors um, I know quite a few people that even though they did have vacation time they didn't have the money to go anywhere so they had the time but they didn't have money and of course you know with the national wage being so low and we are hoping and really really focusing on um, the national wage going up it needs to go up it needs to go up substantially and it needs to go up now it really does because people are making uh, a pauper's wage really uh, I believe it's 750 an hour um, 
I know that some states will offer a higher minimum wage, but that's uh, individual states. It's not a federal mandate. Uh, so, of course, you know, federal means, you know, the umbrella, it covers the entire country. And then, of course, state level, you know, they're a completely different entity. Um, and it's funny, like, Every job I have ever worked for and uh, friends that I've spoken to that were employed, uh, the majority of them had to wait uh, six months to a year, uh, sometimes longer, in order to qualify for their benefits, their health insurance, their uh, 401k, their um, you know retirement, uh, these sorts of things. They weren't immediate as soon as they were hired. These are things they were told in a roundabout way, not literally told, although the implication was there and it was quite clear, but they were told, um, you're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to do with less. Um, and Americans are workaholics. They really are. Uh, the Gallup poll which I used to work for, really cool company. Uh, they polled American workers and uh, they found out that overall, okay, now this is overall all over America, and the Gallup poll works by grabbing percentages of people from different parts of the United States, all over. Trust me, I know. <laughs> I was in the call, the call queue, so I, I, ta I spoke to people from every corner of the United States. It was fun. Sometimes it wasn't, but most of the time it was. And they found out that the average amount of hours that a worker in America works per week is 47 hours. That's average. Um, and, you know, that of course indicates that, you know, Americans are very much workaholics, but it isn't just that because the thing is is um, if your job lets you work that many hours then great you have full-time benefits because once you reach 40 hours then you are considered full-time and you will get your benefits however I have worked at quite a few places in my life and a lot of them, uh, they would keep several employees at 47 hours, or I'm sorry, 37 hours per week, um, 35, you know, and they would leave it so that they weren't full time, but they were working there and they would keep them with like, almost like a carrot dangling in front of them. You know, like, well, you could do it. Um, you could have this, just keep working hard and you'll get there. Not a fan, you know? Um, and the thing is, is like, you, you know that, that people are desperate for health insurance over there and they want that security you know, and so it's really hard. It's extra stress when you're over in America and you know you need a job to stay at that job and you know you need to work hard and you can't miss any work because if you do, you might as well just start over um, because you're not going to make it. And it's a lot of stress. But here's the other part that this is my personal experience, okay? Because I can't speak for everyone. Um, I can only recount experiences I've had in, in the job, but, um, it's, once you're permanent and you have ad, um, access to all these benefits, you know, they'll have the 401k where they say whatever amount of money you put into your 401k, uh, they will match it, which is, you know, a really good deal. So, you know, you stand a chance of doubling your money over time and you're not really doing much except putting money in. So, bravo, it's a great program, right? Um, and of course you get mental health coverage, you get a free gym membership, you get access to a credit union, uh, you know, lots of little, you know, things that you can get a hold of. 
But the trouble is that even though you have access to all these doctors now, is trying to find the time to go see them. That was where I was having a very difficult time because um, they would want me to come in and, and be seen, but I was working. Well, they would try to reschedule. And eventually, it would get to a point where I would have to ask for um, a little bit of time off um, just so I could go see the doctor. And then I would have to make it up later, which I'm fine with, but the stress factor goes up because it's not a seamless process. You know you need to go see the doctor, you know you have the health insurance now, and you know that you have the job that you have, but there's still a little sense of precariousness because you're actually using the health insurance and you're mm, you're kind of putting your boss out and they're making you feel a little uncomfortable because you're having to take time to go see the doctor that you now have available to you. Just try to think about all this for a second. It's not a stress-free thing, even if you get the health insurance. Um, and jobs over there are, um, well, let's say this. Um, my last job, I was promised that I wasn't going to lose my job. And I was told again and again, you're not losing your job because I had become sick because of my back and there was nothing I could do literally I I couldn't stand I couldn't sit it was awkward I was in a lot of pain and I was recovering from back surgery and it was during some time like that when um, my employer called me and told me I no longer had a job and um, the unwritten, unspoken portion of that was, well, you don't have a job anymore, you don't have benefits, you don't have health insurance, you don't have anything. And I was just, I was sitting there stunned and shaking and terrified because I knew that my whole world was changed and I couldn't do anything to stop it. You know, um, my my partner she um has injured herself okay no fault of her own you know um and i watch the process that she's going through and i just think wow you know i wish i had something a little bit more like that uh, because it might be jumping some hoops and yes there are, you know there are people that you might not want to talk to because they might be a little unpleasant but you know what there's a bit of a safety net there, you know, and that matters. That matters a lot. It, um, it can make a huge difference. And, you know, when you're stressed out because you've lost pretty much everything, um, cause I went from a substantial income to, um, uh, a meager income. How about that? And it's one of those experiences you, you would have to be an American to understand but they were so pleasant on the phone when they told me that I was no longer employed there and they were, they were just so nice about it it made it even worse <laughs> because I couldn't get mad at them and even if I could I wouldn't have because it wasn't their fault they were just the messengers right yeah so yeah there I was unemployed the job market in America is very uh, difficult and you you have to be willing to dedicate yourself to the employer, the company, everything. Um, one job that I had, it lasted quite a while and it was not uncommon for me to come into work at five in the morning and I would work until oh, 7 p.m. And then uh, around about like the holiday time would come around and we would be informed, well, uh, we need all of you to pull extra weight. So you're going to be uh, required to do an additional 20 hours mandatory overtime. Now I knew that was against the law at the time, but who do you tell, right? 
so most of us just just did it um and uh part of us wanted to make like little cots under our beds and just spend the night at the at the workplace but we couldn't so we didn't but um yeah it's just uh there's just there's a lot going on with with employers and uh, I hope that the American people will actually begin to speak up about this because this is not the proper way uh, that workers should have to feel you know uh, in fact a lot of times um, workers at their workstation they won't go anywhere to eat. They just have their lunch at their desk and keep working. And I can vouch for this because I saw it where I worked at my last job. Um, they would open their lunch, they would have it at their desk, and there you go. And uh, the, the, the smell of all the different kinds of lunches was, uh, it was a bit overwhelming, to be honest. Uh, but, you know. Anyway, there are five states in the United States that do provide paid maternity leave. And I will tell you what they are, okay? It's California, Massachusetts, uh, let's see, Georgia, New Jersey, Rhode Island, and yeah, and that's it. Those are the ones that have the paid maternity leave, which I think is incredibly important because it's, you know, it's dealing with the formative years of, you know, a young critter, a little bitty, you know critter and I, I call them all critters I mean I'm a big critter you know they're little critters and I don't know I just think it's cute <laughs> I hope you don't mind but um, yeah so uh, if you have any questions I mean please by all means you know leave the questions at the very bottom of this I would love to answer these uh, questions that you have um, and, you know, if there's anything you'd like to tell me about the English work environment, uh, please, by all means, do. Uh, speaking of, I actually thought of one other thing. Um, there's a difference between uh, the American workplace and the English workplace in another way. Um, in England, uh, according to what I'm understanding, uh, they like to socialize with their co-workers after work somewhere else we don't do that in America not usually um, <clears throat> usually what we do is we go to work we clock in we clock out we go home and we don't socialize with anybody um, but it seems like in England um, that's encouraged uh, to socialize and have like a little happy hour or something with your co-workers and uh, yeah I mean I think it's it's a cool idea but <sighs> Uh, you know different cultures and all that I just think it's interesting all the things that make us different and all the things that are actually very similar so with that I will bid you a uh, good night and um, I hope to hear from all of you and by the way thank you for my new subscribers I'm so so happy to have you here with me and uh, if you have not subscribed because I've been looking at my analytics and it says the majority of my traffic doesn't subscribe they look at it they like it and they keep coming back but they don't subscribe I need your help guys I need you to subscribe and then click the little bell and actually accept all the little uh, updates and then uh, we can only grow from here guys <sighs> anyway good night uh, we'll talk to you guys again at another point in time. Take care. And I'll see you later.